Hello everyone, this video tutorial is for the Wellington wristlet by KMG Handmade. As you can see it's a wristlet, it's got the little wristlet here, but the nice thing about this is you can detach it and you could just have a little wallet. Put the wristlet back on. You could do something on the front here on the flap. It's just a curved flap, but you could do a little feature here on the front if you have a small embroidery that you want to do, or even on the back if you have something small enough or if you want to fussy cut some fabric and put it here. It is held closed with a snap. I used a plastic snap. There's options to use a metal snap if you prefer. When you open it up, you have two card slots right here on the front. Then behind those card slots is a zipper pocket, so perfect for your coins. Behind the zipper pocket, right behind, is this slot that is perfect for cash, so your bills or even any receipts. Then you have two more card slots right behind that bill slot right there. Then it all closes just like that with the snap again and you have your little wristlet. Perfect for throwing into the bottom of your book bag or your purse if you don't want to have a big wallet with you or if you're just going on a quick outing and you just want to have a smaller wallet with you and you don't want to carry around your bigger wallet. This is perfect for that for quick little outings. These make Great little add-on gifts to anything you're making. Say you're making a bag and you want to make a little wallet to match. This would be perfect because it does whip up really quick. You can make a lot of them in a very small amount of time. So if you have a craft market coming up, perfect for that. Also with Christmas coming, you could make these for stocking stuffers and you can put a little gift card in it and then it's like two gifts in one so it's wrapped. You don't have to worry about putting it in anything. You just have to put it in a bag or wrap it in wrapping paper obviously, but you have the little um, wallet that it is holding your gift card and then they get the little wallet as well as the gift card. So I'm going to walk you through all the steps of making this Wellington wa Wellington wristlet and share some tips and tricks along the way. So let's get started making our Wellington wristlet. So the very first thing you'll want to do before you begin is read through the entire pattern. There's always some information in there from the designers that you may want to make note of before you begin. After you have read through the entire pattern, you can go ahead and print your pattern pieces and tape them together. Once you have that all done, you're then ready to select your fabrics and cut your fabrics out. So I've already gone ahead and done that. I've already cut out all my fabrics. I figure that that's not something I need to do on camera. I do also want to note that I don't do that on camera because I don't show pattern pieces, measurements, I don't give seam allowances, nothing. You won't see rulers or anything on my table unless it's something, say, I'm doing a hack and I'm adding something to the pattern and it doesn't give away um, any information in the pattern, then that's when you will see it. But otherwise, anything to do with the pattern at all, you will never see rulers, cutting mats, pattern pieces. I don't say measurements, nothing like that at all. And that's for the protection of the pattern and the designer. So you will need to have your pattern open either on another device or printed beside you so that you can refer to it as we're going along. What I do is I have the pattern open on my screen and then I have a smaller screen, so kind of like a screen and screen viewing where I have the video playing in the corner. That's what I do when I record. I have my pattern and the video so that I can see in case the video stops recording at any point, I can see right away. So it makes it so it's kind of like a picture and picture or screen and screen, whatever you want to call it, so that I can still see the video and I can still follow along with the pattern. So you'll definitely want to have that open because as I mentioned, I don't give any information and that includes seam allowances. I always say to refer to the pattern for those. So once you have all your pattern pieces cut out, you can go ahead and because you've read through the pattern, Make the marks that are suggested to make in the pattern. So I've gone ahead and made all those marks. I've even marked my B and A pieces here with B and A, and you'll notice that says A, sorry, B and C. You'll also notice that that says that on these pattern pieces. And I've gone ahead and I've made the marks here, and I've added the tape. Because I've read ahead, I know where these need to be placed. So I've gone ahead and done that just so that when we get to these steps, I don't have to stop the camera, go off camera and make these measurements. They're all done already. I've also gone ahead and folded my strap and pressed it. And then I have cut my zipper to length and I've pinned it together with the zipper tabs because sometimes these tabs tend to grow little legs and they run off or um, my furry friend likes to take them and play with them and then I find them somewhere else in the house. So I started clipping them together and that way there I don't lose them, don't misplace them. So now that we have everything cut, we are ready to begin sewing. So the first thing you'll need is your wrist strap. 
And as I mentioned, I did go ahead and fold and press it. However, I will show you how this is done. So you're going to have a piece that's going to look like this right now. You will fold it in half along the long edges. So make the long edges meet and fold it in half. Open that up and then you're going to fold those long edges in to meet the center. Now, don't fold it so that the long edges go right into the center. Leave about, I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch between, just a small little gap between so that when we then fold this in half again, you don't end up with the bulk here in this folded seam. So just having that little bit of extra gap between helps reduce that bulk so you don't get it in that middle fold. So once you have those folded into the center, as I already shown, we're going to then fold this in half completely, just like that. And all your raw edges will be hidden on the long edges. Now I know you're wondering what we're going to do with the short edges. We're going to just show you now. So once you have this folded, you'll then take your hardware, so your swivel hook, you'll slide it onto your wrist strap, just like that. Then we need to take these short edges and bring them together and pin them. So you're going to bring them so that they are pretty sides touching. So here it is. Make sure you don't get it twisted. So leave it flat if it helps you. Leave it flat on your table and then you just pull it around to meet each other. Open up all your folds, clip it together, just like that. So this is now in the middle. We're going to sew this edge with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Now that that is sewn, you're going to take it and press this flat. And I like to finger press. I also have a press, a seam roller that you can use. So whatever you have, or you can go to your iron and press it. Once you have that pressed flat, you'll then repress your folds to go into the center again. You want to refold this all in the center and you want to fold it all up the way we did before we sewed those short edges together. And I'm going to pin it. And just as you're pinning it, just make sure that it's not getting all twisted. And by twisted, I mean, so you pin this and it ends up like that where it doesn't line up. Just kind of give it a tug and you'll know where you need to pin it so that it stays nice and flat. So again, give it a tug. You can see it's flat and I'm going to add a clip. So when we're sewing this, we're sewing this circle. It's going to be a circle. As you're sewing, you're going to remove your clips, of course, but just as you're sewing along, you're going to keep sliding your swivel hook out of the way. So say this is my presser foot here and my swivel hook is there. I'm just going to move it and just keep moving it as I'm sewing. And I like to start on the seam, if I can find it. That's just a personal preference, so the seam where we joined previously. So don't forget to back stitch. So here you go, I'm going to move a couple clips and then I can slide my swivel hook out of the way. And again, remove those swivel, those clips, slide my swivel hook out of the way. And even as I'm holding it here on my machine, I have it so that it's behind my hands. And what happens is as I'm going, my hands, it's pushing against my hands and it's moving it for me so it's not going here. I'm keeping it behind my hand here. So it hits my hand and this is still going. I'm not holding this down tight. The machine is still pulling it. But that way there, I don't have to always stop because it's moving it by hitting my hand. 
I'll show you what I mean now that I have to top stitch the other side. All right, so here's what I mean. Starting at the seam again, and I'm going to put the swivel hook here so it's behind my hands. So just like this, here's the swivel hook, and I just guide. I only really had to keep shifting it because I had clips originally, and as you're taking the clips off, the swivel hook is naturally going to get caught between some clips. So now you can either sew a box behind the clip or rivet it. I'm going to rivet mine, but I'm going to wait because we're going to use some rivets later. And I'm just moving so that seam where the wrist strap met each other that we sewn when we made this tube or this circle, sorry. I don't place it so it's right here in the middle on my wrist strap. I slide it up a bit so that it's behind the wrist strap or not behind the wrist strap. Um, after or behind the swivel hook. It's right here, that seam. However, when I go to add my rivet, I'm going to be very careful not to rivet through that seam. So I'll either go just below or just above. And that may mean I may need to shift this around a little bit. That's okay. So when I punch it, I'll be working on this side so I can see this seam here and I will add the rivet just beyond or just past that seam so I don't go through it and break the stitches. I'm going to do that later because I am going to use my rivet press later and rather than pulling it all out and stopping the video, I'll do that later. So we can put that to the side for now. We're going to move on to some prep work for the zipper. So for this step, you need your zipper and your zipper tabs. These are not lettered, zipper tabs E. Um, so you need these in the pattern she gives instructions for what the final measurement of this zipper needs to be. So you'll want to cut your zipper to length. Once you have your zipper cut to length, you will then take your zipper tabs and you will place them so it is pretty sides touching against the right side of the zipper. So just like that. And you're lining up the raw edge of the zipper with the long raw edge of your zipper tab. So again, long raw edge with the short edge of your zipper tab. And I like to place a pin just to help hold it. Then once you have that like this, this is how it's going to look. You're then going to, I just removed one clip, wrap it around and clip it back in place. So you're wrapping it back onto itself. So see there's the zipper between, you're wrapping it around. And you'll do that on the other side as well. Wrap it around and clip it back onto itself. Just like that. So here's where it wrapped around and that's the right side. So we'll do that for the second side. So again, right side of the zipper against the pretty side of your material line up that raw edge with the short raw edge of the zipper wrap it around the zipper tab around the zipper just like that and bring the other side around just like that and clip it in place and that's how it looks we will then sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern Alright, 
So now we just clip our threads. And I wanted to know if you're using a thicker material for this step, you can go ahead and trim your fabric back. I don't ever trim my zippers and the reason for this is because I've had it where I've trimmed my zippers and they fray. Even with me using my um, method of preventing them from fraying, it still happened and what happened was it came right out of the seam of a, of a bag. It happened to a few bags and I stopped cutting my zippers, especially on curves or areas like this because I don't want them to fray anymore. It might not have happened to you but it's just from um, past experiences that's why I don't trim my zippers anymore because I fear that that's going to happen especially if I give a gift like a bag as a gift I don't want that to happen to somebody over time um, so I just don't trim zippers so what I do if I'm trimming here and I'm using a thicker material I'll just trim the zipper tab not the actual zipper so I'll go in with my duckbill scissors and what I do is I trim that zipper tab away so I'll just trim a little bit of this one just so you can see and that just helps me reduce the bulk so just like that and it'll just help reduce the bulk in that seam so that you don't have as much bulk here when you're turning this because now we need to turn these right sides out so you'll remove some of the bulk so to turn it right sides out you just grab it and pull it just like that and it's as easy as that and what I like to do is place a clip on the end Excuse me, I'm still trying to get over this nasty cold that I got, so I may pause the camera once in a while because I need to cough or sneeze. I don't want to do it on camera, but I may need to clear my throat a couple times or take a drink because my throat is still kind of bothering me a little bit. So again, I turned it right sides out. I had a clip, and then I just finger press this. I don't go to my iron or use my seam roller for this I just finger press it because that just seems to be good enough so now we're going to top stitch the tabs on this on the zipper tab end away from the zipper tape so you're going to top stitch right here along the tab using the seam allowance given in the pattern you're done top stitching to return your stitch length back to the length you like to use for sewing together your bag clip all your threads just like that and that's how it'll look so we're going to set this to the side for now Moving along, we need our lining A piece, and there are some marks that you need to make on this pattern piece. They are given in the pattern, so you'll want to refer to that for where you're making those lines to make the marks, and those are going to be fold lines, and there's going to be valleys, which will look like this, and mountains, which will look like that. So when we're folding a valley, we're folding it so the right sides of the fabric are together, and when we're folding a mountain, the wrong sides of the fabric will be together. So starting on our lining A piece, and when you're making your marks, just to note, you're making them from the bottom up. So I've marked a T, that helps me know where the top of my pattern piece is. So starting at the first line, we're going to fold and make a mountain fold. And again, I've made these marks before, I came on camera so that my marks are all done, but you can pause this and definitely go ahead and make all your marks. So at the first mark from the bottom up, we're going to fold so it's a mountain fold. That is so that they are wrong sides together. So there's your first fold. Your next fold will be a valley fold. So we're going to fold on that line so they are right sides together, just like that. So now we have a mountain and a valley. Now we have the next mark where we need to make another mountain fold and we're going to fold it at that line and create that mountain fold. So now we have two mountains and one valley. Then what I do is I take it, I flip it, I find where my next line is and I press it at that next line to make a valley fold. So the fabrics are going right sides together now. Then I find the next line and I'm folding them wrong sides together to make another mountain fold. Go to the next line, valley fold. Go 
And then you have one more line that is another valley fold. And that'll be for later. We're not doing anything with that line. At this moment, that will be for later. That's for when we fold the wallet or wristlet over onto itself. That's so you know where it gets folded. So now we have all these folds. So it looks like this. If you pull this, you've got one mountain fold here and then two mountain folds underneath the first one. So one, two and you have your valleys and so the valleys are down so this has created two card pockets and a cash pocket so there's the first card slot and there's the second and when this is over it'll look just like that i'm going to remove those cards for now and i'm going to fold this all back Just pressing with my fingers. Now you can go ahead and take this to your um, iron and give it a really good press with your iron. So now I'm going to top stitch these mountain folds. So you're not going to top stitch the one here. So the, the bottom one here at the bottom, underneath the line is where you're placing this double sided tape. So you want to place it under the line closer to the bottom edge, but right at that line. So you're not top stitching that one and the reason for this is we're going to be adding a zipper pocket here and this is where the zipper is going to be attached. So once you've attached the zipper, you'll end up top stitching this fold here. So we're going to move that fold out of the way and we're only going to top stitch these two mountain folds here. These are the two we're top stitching. So I'm going to top stitch them. <clears throat> so have all your fabrics out of the way, you just want to top stitch that mountain fold. Trim all your threads. And then we can refold everything back up. So now that we have these top stitched, we need to make our card slots. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pin the sides so that nothing shifts on me. And this is a little bit of a different method than what you're probably used to seeing. Normally you'll get measurements for the card slots. However, we're going to use an actual card to make our card slots and we're just going to slip it in, center it, and then we're going to sew down the sides using the measurement given in the pattern. So you're sewing right along the sides of the card slot of the card. So make sure it's centered. And you can use as many clips as you need to hold everything in place so that nothing shifts on you. And don't forget to backstitch at start and stop. Just be careful if your card is inside your pocket. You don't want to hit your card, so just be very careful and go very slowly. If you're really nervous about having the card there while you're stitching, what you can do is feel where the card is and use a marker that is erasable, so such as a clover taco, and draw the line beside where your card is and then still use that same seam allowance to stitch the card slots. So just be very careful not to hit that card. Oops. 
So we now have two card slots right there. Both our card slots are in. I'm going to remove these side clips. Now we need to install our zipper to create our zipper pocket. So take your zipper that you've completed already and you're going to flip that piece. So the zipper tape, or the tape here, the double sided tape that was here, remove the paper backing. We're going to stick this to the zipper and you're going to center this piece onto the zipper. So you want it centered. If you're not sure about how to center or getting it centered perfectly, you could just fold it and then also fold your zipper and create a crease. And then you can just line up those creases from those folds together. So now that that's there, and that's what I was saying before how we're not top stitching, this is why, because now we're going to top stitch that zipper to the panel A piece. When you get to your zipper, just zip it up out of the way. Now you have a piece that should look like this. So you have your two card slots and then the starting of a zipper pocket here. So the one half. So this is your top and then this is going to be going down towards the bottom. And it, it'll all make sense once we get this all done. It will all make sense, I promise. So I'm going to put this one to the side and we will move on. Lining B piece is the same thing. You have some marks that you need to make. They're given in the pattern, so you'll want to make them from the bottom up. Same thing, marked a T at the top, so I know that this is the top. I already placed my tape here, and you're placing it closest to the top, so right after that last line closest to the top. And then we will fold this all just like that. So same thing we did. So we have a first one here, which is a mountain fold. So we're going to fold it at the mountain fold so the pieces are wrong sides together and also when I'm folding I like to make sure that my sides stay straight that way there I know everything is lining up nicely so first fold from the bottom up will be a mountain fold so you're folding it wrong sides together then we have to create this valley fold and I'm going to take my piece and I'm going to fold it at that valley fold so they are right sides touching so it'll look just like that then I need to find the next line which is a mountain and fold it at the mountain so wrong sides together then at the next one which is a valley and you're folding it right sides together and then your final fold which is another mountain and it is going to be right sides or wrong sides together so you now have three mountain folds here however we need to top stitch two of the mountain folds and the two that you're going to top stitch is this one here your first mountain fold and your second mountain fold so I'm going to go top stitch those. Try to find all the threads to snip. <laughs> Excuse me. This may be a bit different than what you're used to when you make wallets. Just trust the process. It really does come together. It really does work. 
it's a bit different. Kristen has a different method of doing this, but it does work. I promise in the end, it all works out. Now that we've top stitched, we need to create our card pockets here. So same thing as we did for the lining A piece, we're going to do the same thing. You're going to leave this piece with the tape up so you're only going to have the two mountain folded mountain folds, the two mountain folds that we top stitch folded. You'll use your card, a credit card, to make your card slots. So again, pin the sides. <coughs> Excuse me. Pin it all the way down. And then we'll top stitch beside the card slots. Again, be very careful when you're top stitching down the side here beside your card, not to hit your card. So that's why I use a card that is no longer needed. So this is a rewards card. It's not being needed anymore because everything's on your phone. So I just keep these for um, photography or for things like this where I need to make measurements. So back stitching at start and stop. it over, repeat that for the other side. And I'm really taking my time to back stitch because I don't want those stitches to come undone. I might have went a little back stitch crazy but that's okay I'm not cutting the threads on the back because I don't feel that they need to be cut you're not going to see them in the finished wallet so I'm just focusing more on making sure my front ones are cut so there you go I now have two card slots so now we need to attach lining B to lining A and we're going to do that the same way we attached it to the zipper but this time you have this end of the zipper that you're attaching it to. So the side that has nothing attached to it. So fold back where your piece is for the zipper pocket, remove that paper backing, and again, center it. Now the nice thing about centering it is you can actually just line up the sides with A and B to each other. Right, so now that we've attached the zipper to the lining B piece, we need to top stitch this to the zipper. So just as we did with lining A. And once you approach that zipper pull, just lift up your presser foot, slide the zipper out of the way, and continue on. Just trimming threads. It's actually quite a bit that I've missed. All right. So that's how it's looking now with, I just want to make sure I've these flipped around, lining A here and lining B. So you have your zipper in between. Now we need to flip this over and we're going to sew the zipper pocket together. So you're going to take these two pieces, place them together, clip them, and then you're going to sew the bottom edge. myself <laughs> we're going to fold this card this pocket up Oops. 
until it meets that top card slot. And it's going to seem a bit fiddly, at least it is for me. Clip it in place. You want to slide your zipper pull out of the way. You don't want it to get caught when you're sewing, so definitely slide it so it is in the center. And to make sure that my zipper pocket is going to be in half, I'm actually folding the, or not the zipper pocket, that the, the zipper pocket will be placed so that your zipper, you want it to look like this. So you don't want the zipper flat, you want the zipper to be at the top. So I'm folding the zipper tabs directly in half and then I'm pinning them and that'll help force the rest of the pocket to be in half and so that the zipper is at the top. So once you have that done, you can then go ahead and pin down the sides. And I'm using lots of clips. You'll notice I use lots of clips. going to sew the sides using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So I'm going to slide my zipper again so my pull is in the middle. I don't want to hit that pull and I'm going to sew down the sides. And just take your time you don't want anything shifting on you, especially up at the top there. As you can see this is pretty bulky now so depending on your machine and the material you used it's going to be really bulky it's very important to use materials that your machine likes or can handle it's also nice that there's no interfacing on this so that helps reduce some of the bulk as well and there we go we have our zipper pocket we have a spot for cash and we have card slots Oops. in behind that zipper pocket we have two card slots one two and in front we have two more card slots <coughs> excuse me now I'm going to slide my zipper so that it is in the middle because now we're going to finish our wallet now Kristen does have in the pattern that if you want to add a logo where you need to add it. So she's got the measurements for that. So you'll want to go ahead and refer to that um, for where you're adding your logo. If you have chosen to have the pattern piece where you've sewn these two pieces together, so you have a different top than the bottom, you'll want to follow the instructions for that so that you can attach them together. So now we're going to place these so they are right sides together. So lining is right sides up and exterior is wrong sides up. So they are pretty sides together. And I've drawn my seam allowance on the back of this, which is very helpful to make sure you're getting an accurate seam allowance because you do want to be accurate.
Just make sure that zipper pull is in the center. And now we're going to stitch around the bottom, all around the sides, but we're going to leave an opening for turning right sides out. So what you're going to do is you're going to start stitching at the bottom, come up to where your seam allowance is, turn, stitch all the way to the corner, and turn and go all the way up and around. So we're going to stitch this, but don't forget to leave that opening. And she does give a measurement in the pattern for where to leave the opening and how far. So you'll want to refer to that. And don't forget to back stitch it and start and stop. And when I get to a corner, I like to back stitch in those corners. I just find that it adds a bit of extra security for when I'm turning the piece right sides out in the corner because you're poking pretty hard when you're pushing out a corner. Here's where we're coming into quite a bit of bulk. And I'm just going slowly around these curves. When I'm at the top here, I leave my needle down, pivot it a bit, take one stitch, needle down, lift up the presser foot, pivot again, needle down, presser foot up, pivot again. Press her foot up, needle down, pivot more, and then continue. And that's what I do with those curves, so I get nice curves. See how you can hear my machine really hammering away in those, in that bulky area. Right off the edge of the fabric. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we're going to trim along this curved edge. seam allowance. I'm trimming my corners. You don't trim where your opening is left. That stays exactly how it is. So all my seam allowance is trimmed down except for the opening. So you're going to have a piece that looks like this. I'm going to put it down on the table. It's easier to see. So now we're going to turn this to fall. We're going to turn this so that it is right sides out and you may want to get a turning tool to help you poke out your corners. Carefully poke your corners out. All your curves. And then I'm going to take this to my iron and carefully give it a press, very, very carefully because I did use a vinyl on the exterior, but I do want to press it just so that it gets a nice press. And we'll come back and we will continue on finishing our wristlet. 
All right, so I've given it a press, and when I'm pressing, I'm making sure I'm pushing inside where the card slots are so that everything is nice and flat. Now we need to insert our interfacing. And to do this might be a bit tricky. And I'm trying to put it under the seam allowance so it's only against my exterior. Now I'm going to go back to my iron and give this a press again. It is fusible so I want it to fuse in place. So I'm going to go back to my iron and give that a press and fuse it in place. Now that we have this all pressed, we can go ahead and top stitch the curved edge and the bottom. If you're using an industrial machine and your machine can get through all these layers of this bulk, go ahead and top stitch all the way around. However, if you have a machine and you don't think it's going to be able to handle stitching through all those layers, you're just going to stitch the curve and the bottom edge. And that's what I'm going to do just because I worry that this machine won't be able to make it through because that is quite a bit of bulk there. to stitch where the curved edge of the flap is. Oops. Might be a good idea to start figure out what way is the best way to go. And I'm going to do the same thing I did when I stitched the lining and the exterior together. Take one stitch, pivot, pivot again. back stitching you could always leave long tails tie them off so what I would do is I would leave long tails pull them through the side seam here tie it off and then you can put the needle back through and pull it through as far as you can and then pull it through and then when the threads come out just pull it tight and snip the threads and then they'll be tucked in there and that way there you won't have any back stitching now because this is a bit bulky you can add rivets to the sides here so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to use my tabletop press and I'm going to place some rivets just under the zipper here and Kristen does give a measurement for that so I'm going to place some rivets I've already 
already gone ahead and made those marks for where I'm going to place my rivets. I did that while I was ironing. So make sure everything is flat underneath. It is going through a lot of bulk, just keep that in mind. And then we will insert our rivet, but before I do that, I'm going to use this fray stop, which the cap is currently glued. Interesting. I can't get this cap off. There we go. I'm going to use some fray stop where I've punched my holes just to make sure that it doesn't fray over time. And you'll want to use the length of post for your rivet that will go with the width of your fabric. how it's looking so far you have it on the exterior and now we need to make some lines for stitching here at in the middle so I'm going to go make those lines for where we need to stitch the rectangular box along the bottom so I'm going to go make those lines and come back and we will stitch it sorry before we continue on we need to place our snaps on our wristlet so there's a mark you need to make on the pattern piece for where the first half will go on the curved edge here. So I already have mine marked. And I think I'll use, yeah, I think silver will be the best. So the cap is going to be on the same side as the exterior and the snap part will be on your lining for this side. Now we're going to fold the wristlet. So fold the bottom edge so it comes up to meet the top of the pocket. And fold the other one down at that line. So remember there was a line you made here? I can still see mine just ever so slightly. I'm going to fold it at that line. Just to get it all smoothed out. Fold it at that line. And then when you fold it down, you can take this snap and push it. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you can make a mark for where that snap is, right in the center of that snap.
And the nice thing about this is it's not affecting any card slots or anything because there's no card slots down here. So now we need to install the other half. So for me, it's the male half of my snap. And this time your cap of your snap will be on the lining side and the snap, the male half will be on the exterior. Usually I would use my tabletop press, but I have it all set up for rivets. So I just use this, unless I'm doing a lot, then I would set up the tabletop press. So that's done. So then you can snap these together. Just like that. And if you really wanted to, you could always add another snap up here if you'd want. There's my zipper. That's where my wrist strap is going to be attached. And I still need to add my um, rivet. So I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to make the mark here that we need to sew. And then I'm going to add the rivet to my wrist strap and come back and we will continue on. All right, so that's how my wristless look, wristlet looks with the rivet attached. So now I'm going to stitch the rectangle on the bottom here of the wallet. And this just helps add some structure. It's a little bit hard to see. your wallet back closed clip your wristlet to your zipper pull that's why it's important to have one like this that has a hole big enough to clip to so there's our Wellington wristlet all complete we've attached our wristlet we've added our snap now if you want, you could do a little bit of embroidery here on the flap or on the back. You could even add an extra snap if you want, just to add a little bit more um, design to it. When you open it up, we have our card slots, we have our zipper pocket, our cash pocket, more card slots here. Excellent little wallet, quick and easy to make. You could throw these into a gift for a little add-on gift or even for stocking stuffers with Christmas coming, they're great for stocking stuffers. Or if you're already making a well in advance for the next Christmas, they make great little Christmas stocking stuffers. You can add a little gift card inside and then you have two gifts in one basically. You get this cute little wallet that they could have. This would be great for students. They could just throw this into their backpack and they have everything they need with them. So once you're done making your Wellington wallet, don't forget to take some pictures and share it in the KMG Handmade Bag Makers group on Facebook and also use the hashtags that are given in the pattern so that we can find your Wellington wristlets and we can all admire them together with you. So I hope you enjoyed sewing along with me and maybe picked up a few tips and tricks along the way. Thank you for sewing along with me. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye.